Hello, buongiorno, and welcome to the race notebook for the 2020 not San Marino Grand Prix at Imola, the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Oh, have we got a photo? No, I think we've got. Uh, I was going to take my time and do some sort of steady emotional uh, uh, link about how you know we're gathered here at the venue of legends and uh, and uh, and everything and talk about the podium before we go to the uh, the photo of Mercedes celebrating their uh, their seventh consecutive uh, constructors championship. But it looks like we have a rash of of people out in uh, rash vests or whatever they call these um, nylon uh, t-shirts with seven uh, on it, seven stars, the number seven. And it looks like we're ready to go. And today is all about the achievement, isn't it? If, uh, if last week in Portugal, the last time out in Portugal was all about the achievement uh, of 92, which became 93 today, then today is about the achievement of Mercedes becoming uh, seven times consecutive uh, World Constructors' Championships. Here are the trophies. Now, I'm pretty sure you would have seen this or heard about this, but the trophies Trophies have a 14 carat diamond on the point at um, uh, Tamburello where Ayrton Senna uh, had his crash and of course later died. So they are very, very special um, trophies. Uh, Pete, how do you feel about shooting through this, uh, this wall? Uh, I think you can do it or uh, actually we've got uh, Lee, the, Lee the Marine is in there so he can, see the, uh, he can see the trophies. That's good. We've got all bases covered here for these uh, celebrations. So yeah, you can see there's the little diamond um, just on the edge of Tamburello. Of course, now the Tamburello uh, chicane is in there so it looks different from it did in 94. And then it's a carbon fiber sort of plate and then the F170 logo and then the out uh, the outline of the Imola uh, track. So um, there we go. It's uh, the pit board is out. Lewis, thank you, Petronas, uh, for everything uh, fuel and for the money. And uh, we've made uh, history today. But you know, it's the achievement. I love I love Roscoe in the uh, in the high vis vest. That's just the best, isn't it? It's uh, it's just the best. Um, but um, the history thing is just about the people and the place and the culture and what makes it such a great place to work and what makes it, you know, that they all strive to not only do better, but make better, but think cleverer and, and, and they support each other. Imagine, you know, the best place you've ever worked. Imagine the best boss you ever had. Imagine the best co-workers that you ever had. There were no politics, no rubbish, no bull, you know, no, no, no internal politics or very few internal politics. You all got on. No blame. No blame culture as well, which is prevalent in so many Formula One teams. They don't do well. They always find someone to blame, don't they? Got to blame this guy, this girl. Get rid of them. They're no good. It just doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in Mercedes. If there's a problem, someone's made a mistake, fine. We sort it out together. If there's an issue that we need to close up, well, we'll, we'll close that up. If the front axle isn't working, we're not working the tires, let's fix that. If the, if the, you know, DAS, the dual axis steering, you know, the car's a little bit slow. The drivers say the car's a bit slow on, uh, on, on, on safety car restarts. You know, can we do something about that, lads and girls? Yeah, we can, Lewis. Yeah, we can, Valtteri. We can come up with an amazing system which heats up your front tires, which exercises the front tires and fix that. We can do it. And that's what's amazing, isn't it, about this team? That's why they can do it. And they're on a roll. It's a virtuous circle, of course it is. The more they keep winning, the more people want to stay there, you know, the more money they get for winning. And, uh, and, and, and so they keep going. I don't suppose we should be surprised. Has that guy on the bottom right, Pete, got a, uh, a glitter gun? It's just, he's, he's ready, isn't he? But uh, everyone's, uh, everyone's ready. Um, and, uh, and that's why they keep achieving. It's, it's records are broken. Um, you can see the, uh, can you see the lady at the back with the, uh, uh, with the sort of slightly orange hair? She's Toto's, uh, she's Toto's PA. And I think in her, in her hand, she's got a special Nicky Lauda uh, cap. Uh, and, you know, as well as Ayrton looking down and maybe Roland looking down on uh, his countryman Toto Wolf becoming, you know, so successful. Um, I wonder if Nicky's looking down today saying, well done, guys. You did it did it again thank you thank you lifting off the old red cap unbelievable unbelievable they did it again they did it again so uh, I'm sure I'm sure he is yeah she is uh, she is wearing the, uh, the special Nicky Lauda Parmalat hat uh, Toto's uh, executive assistant at the back there little thought for Toto for, 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 for Nicky 
And here we go. Here's Lewis. He's clearly going to be the champ again. He's the champ now. He's clearly going to be the champ again. Only a Mercedes driver can win the championship now. Now that Matt with Max Verstappen's DNF, it's only going to be Bottas or Hamilton. Don't know which one yet, obviously, but uh, with Hamilton's lead, let's face it, it's probably going to be Lewis. And we have his mechanics everywhere. The, the Lewis's car crew, Valtteri's car crew. And let's not forget, you know, that they've been, uh, they've had their lives affected by COVID-19 just like the rest of us have. You know, they had, uh, they had people in the factory go down with the virus. They had people having to come to Portugal, having to, uh, to cover for everybody else. But they got through that. You know, they got through that. And uh, just like everything else they do with teamwork, they got through that. Here comes Toto with the Nikki cap, with the Parmalat hat. And we'll just soak in these scenes for a minute. Toto just uh, getting his place amongst Roscoe. Just budge up Roscoe's bum to get there. There you go, he can sit on the, top, the front tire. Here we go. Just so letting everybody know what's going to happen. Count of seven and then cheer. Yay! Go on, boys and girls, you deserve it. You deserve it. And it's achievement, isn't it? Imagine being the best in the world at what you do. Imagine, you know, having your, having your life, having your family, obviously, you know, you, what you achieve in your personal life, having your kids, tends to be your biggest achievement. But your professional life, to be the best in the world at whatever you do, has to be the ultimate. And that is it, Toto Wolf is the best. He's getting proper attention from Lewis and Valtteri. Toto Wolf, Valtteri Bottas, everybody, everybody. They're the best in the world at what they do. And you can't ask for much more than that. And they've achieved it. Who's to say they're not going to achieve another one next year? You know, I can't see anyone closing on them because the car is great. And this W11, you know, I think has to go down as one of the best, if not the best car they've ever produced. The engine as well, and Lewis said this in the pen afterwards, the engine has to be one of the best they've ever done. Andy Cowell and his team at Bricksworth have to take all the credit for that. Pushed on from Ferrari. Just don't forget this engine was born around the time that Ferrari were doing something that, you know, maybe was uh, against the, the spirit of the regulations, if not the rule. And they pushed Mercedes into delivering and, and uh, bettering their engine to beat Ferrari. And they did that. So it's the best power unit, spurred on, inspired by Ferrari. It's the best power unit, and it's the best car. And they've got the best drivers, it would seem, in the pit lane as well, in Hamilton and Bottas. And, and, and Bottas was unlucky today. He picked up damage. Uh, he initially got, uh, he held the lead from pole position, uh, but had uh, debris from Haas, it looked like. And um, actually, affected his car quite badly. He bravely held on to, uh, to, to P2 once uh, Lewis Hamilton uh, took the lead, but he locked up and was passed by Max Verstappen. Um, it looked like with Hamilton's strategy, he went long uh, once Bottas had pitted early, and being the tyre king, he actually looked like he'd made up the time on, uh, he'd made up the time on Valtteri Bottas, and Lewis was going to win it anyway, uh, or, or rather come out on fresher tyres either ahead or right behind Valtteri Bottas and Max Verstappen on fresher tyres would probably have won it anyway, but in the end, the virtual safety car meant that uh, uh, he uh, was more comfortable, and it's win 93. Um, so, yeah, best car ever, 100th win uh, for, Merce for Mercedes in the hybrid era, 100 race wins for Toto Wolff. It's, it's uh, more than Lotus now, I think, and just one behind McLaren in their whole in their whole history. Toto Wolf was also talking about how the increased lockdowns across Europe is going is to uh, affect 
his team or Formula One. He said, look, the first thing to concentrate on is the health of everybody uh, in our team. We want everybody to stay healthy virus-wise, and then we'll figure out what Formula One does after that. But I think he's, uh, he's handled that very nicely. So I think we've seen, uh, we've seen uh, a great team reach another milestone, another achievement, and you can only take your hat off to them. So congratulations to them. Right, I've done 10 and a half minutes, uh, and I haven't even talked about, haven't even talked about the lucky uh, Imola cat that Lewis Hamilton stroked, um, and uh, got that luck of the draw with the, uh, with, the, with the virtual safety car. That was a bit of a construct, if I'm honest with you. I'm not sure there is such a thing as the lucky Imola cat. It's just something we said to Sebastian Vettel on Thursday, and everyone seems to have picked up and run with it. So, um, uh, well, it will now be called the lucky Imola cat but it was certainly lucky uh, for Lewis because uh, his, uh, his win was cemented in the virtual safety car. Right, let's, uh, let's carry on and uh, keep it brief, shall we, for everybody. Pete, go and see what you can see. Uh, Ferrari, 12th for Sebastian Vettel, Charles Leclerc, 5th. Charles Leclerc, pretty happy. He kept in the race of the midfield early on, but uh, disappointed to be overtaken by Danny Kvyat late on, but happy enough with P5 towards the end. Sebastian Vettel uh, spun Kevin Magnussen round early on at Tosa. He stayed out long, had a bad pit stop. There was a problem on the uh, left rear and then there was a problem on the front right as well so um, not great uh, for Ferrari and uh, he came through and finished 12th so uh, that's uh, yeah could have could have been in the points Sebastian Vettel but wasn't due to the uh, to the slow uh, pit stop um, the big man is here John Elkan the uh, Fiat Chrysler automotive and uh, and the uh, Ferrari chairman and he's meeting with all sorts of people, Renault today, so uh, we'll see what happens there. Red Bull, and it's a double, well, it's not a double DNF, but it's no points for the team. It's a DNF for Max Verstappen, and 15th, and no points for, uh, I'm not sure you're allowed in there, Pete. I think we better come out the pit lane. Good. Uh, <laughs> there you go, reverse. Find reverse. There you go. We might be allowed in there, but it's a, it's a grey area, so uh, why don't you stay out here with me, son? You shoot through the wall. All right, good. It's a grey area. OK, good. Right. Um, Red Bull, uh, DNF and uh, uh, 15th for, uh, for Alex Albon. And a great start from Max. Got past Lewis Hamilton, who had a sort of poor second phase of the start. Um, pitted on lap 19 onto the hard tyre. And then because he went so long on the, on the tyre, uh, it seemed to wear out a little bit and get maybe a puncture. But it certainly seemed to be a team uh, tyre failure. At least that's what Red Bull think it was. Got past Valtteri Bottas, was running P2. And then the tyre blew and he was out at DNF. Alex Albon, a long battle in the sort of midfield fight with Ricardo Leclerc. Stayed out, spun on the restart. Uh, said to me in the pen, thought that somebody uh, tapped him, but it looked like they really didn't, and it just, he just made a mistake. But cold tyres and uh, cold brakes on the restart and dropped to last uh, and finishes there. Um, is it the end of Alex Albon's uh, career at Red Bull Racing and at uh, in Formula One? I don't know. Um, it looks like it probably could be. Uh, he needs to fight. He needs to fight with the team. He needs to fight for his drive because no one else is going to help him. He needs to get to Christian Horner and Alex Albon and say, look, I'm going to grab this by the scruff of the neck. I've had a difficult second album. I've had a difficult second year, but I'm your man for the future. There's no point going back to Nico Hülkenberg or Sergio Perez. It's a toss up between uh, which one is going to get that drive. Uh, it goes between Sergio Perez being the favorite for it and Nico Hülkenberg being the favorite for it, depending on who you talk to and when, uh, when you think about it. Perez certainly got the better uh, call on uh, on it on, on it, you know, pace-wise, and Perez again the star of the race today. But Hulkenberg, maybe they still think Helmut Marco still thinks so. The jungle drums go that per uh, Hulkenberg will be able mentally to to cope with being beaten by Max Verstappen, as they think inevitably will happen. Hulkenberg will be able to cope with that better than Sergio Perez, who might let it go to his head. But that's the situation. But Alex Albon. He can fight all he wants, and he should fight, because um, it looks like we're reaching a crucial decision point. Marco and Horner said that he's got effectively two races, and this was two races ago, to prove that he deserves to keep the drive. And he finished 15th today, and uh, that will be very tough for him, but we'll hope the best for him. Um, McLaren, um, yeah, not really delivering on the potential this weekend, really. They thought they had a faster car. It's all about trying to make the one-stop work. Sainz overtook Lando Norris for peace uh, on lap six. They pitted again on lap on the safety car. They're running seventh and eighth and pretty much finished there. Bit disappointed, couldn't make up any, any ground. They were passed by uh, Alpha Tauri and Renault as, uh, as the, uh, well, faster cars. They're faster cars, the Alpha Tauri and the Renault at the moment. In the Constructors' Championship, it's good against Racing Points because they're both in the, uh, 
in the uh, points, the McLarens in seventh and eighth, Sainz seventh, Norris eighth. Sorry if I didn't already say that. Um, but uh, even though uh, Racing Point only one car scored and Renault only one car scored today. So McLaren need to keep plugging away with good performances by Sainz and Norris to make sure they get that. And we'll do Renault before we take a break. Oh, 15 minutes. Nightmare. Um, Ricardo fifth, and uh, they'll be dancing in the streets of uh, Perth tonight because lockdown has ended and they can do that now. Um, uh, Ocon DNF with a gearbox problem. Ricardo took Gasly uh, early on, was uh, overcut by Sergio Perez, but inherited P3 uh, from Perez in the safety car when Perez pitted and went fairly easily, fairly straightforward it was uh, for Danny Rick to go to the podium, second of the year. Great stuff from him, brilliant drive. Ocon, all sorts of things going wrong for him. A, 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 a tear-off from the visor, crash helmet visor tear-off, got stuck in his brake duct. So they had to pit early and remove that because brakes were going to be cooked. And then he had a drive shaft failure and was a DNF. But uh, yeah, Alon uh, Alonso is testing a two-year-old Renault. They wanted to get Alonso in the young driver uh, test, which would have been needed the agreement of all the teams. But uh, get this for irony. Amongst other teams, McLaren said no. So. Uh, it seems like the McLaren Alonso love affair is well and truly over because McLaren have objected to Fernando Alonso testing this year's car in a, not unreasonably, in a, two, in a, in a current Renault because he's not a young driver. Very reasonably, actually, but uh, they, could have, they could have said yes. But there are other teams that said no uh, as well. What else? Um, oh, yeah, I was just going to tell you uh, that uh, Alpine, what their Renault are going to be next year, really positioning itself in much more of a sort of racy part of uh, the Formula One uh, brand and uh, they're positioning themselves in motorsport as well because they're uh, merging, being part of Formula Regional uh, European Series and uh, that uh, the W Series champion Jamie Chadwick's were racing in this year and Formula Renault. They're sort of uh, uh, twinning that into one championship uh, for next uh, year because Luca Di Meo, the Renault boss, was here this weekend. I was very happy to see Danny Rick on the podium. Right, we'll take a break. More notebook from Atmospheric Monza. Uh, Monza? Oh, more, I'll do that again, shall I? What's that live you say, Pete? All oh, right. Uh, more notebook from Atmospheric Imola in a bit. Hiya, welcome back to Imola for the race notebook for the 2020 Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Now I've got a little task for us, for us both. Can I do the remaining five teams in six minutes and 20 seconds? Well, we're going to find out. Right, let's do Alpha Tauri. And today might have been all about Pierre Gasly, who had qualified in a brilliant fourth position, but it ended up being all about Danny Kvyat, who finished in a brilliant fourth position. Figure that one out. Well, I can tell you there was a problem with Gasly's uh, radiators. There was a little bit of a coolant leak, and that meant that he, even though he got a good start, he got crowded out and uh, and uh, taken on the second phase of the start by Daniel Ricciardo. And then he had a coolant leak, and he had to stop to stop the engine from failing. But Danny Kvyat kept it all together, pitted uh, once, then pitted again under the safety car and overtook Charles Leclerc, closed on Daniel Ricciardo to finish 0.8 of a second, eight tenths of a second behind Daniel Ricciardo for a podium. So just missed out on a podium. P4, Danny Kvyat, great stuff. Is it too late to save his uh, sorry, Alpha Tauri career? Probably, they seem very warm on Yuki Tsunoda, but we'll see how he does in the uh, young driver test and if he gets the points, super license points that he needs. If he doesn't do too well in the test and he doesn't get the points he needs, then Kvyat will stay next year because he's really coming in too strong. But it might, hopefully, for him, it isn't too little, too late. But Alpha Tauri have an upgrade coming for Turkey. So uh, with some nice new aero bits. So they're actually going to be quicker in the races uh, coming up. They really made a step forward. Racing point. And Sergio Perez, sixth. Lance Stroll, 13th. Terrible, we'll do Stroll first. Not a good lap. Terrible lap uh, one for Lance Stroll. Went off with Ocon. Had to pit onto the hard tires. Then he came in on the safety car and had to uh, hit it. Well, he didn't have it. Unfortunately, he hit his crew at the uh, pit stop, but they're all OK. But Checo, the postman Perez, went longer than Daniel Ricciardo and Leclerc. Was running P4, pitted under the safety car. It wasn't the right call. Uh, they thought that with new tyres, Checo would be able to uh, make up the time and uh, regain his position and uh, get onto the podium, but it wasn't. So they really did lose a podium today, did Racing Point. But it was, uh, it was the right intention, but the wrong uh, result because uh, track position is king round here. But um, in any case, uh, he was, well, he was a little bit annoyed, actually. I was going to say he was all right with it, Sergio Perez. He really wasn't after the race. He felt he lost the podium today. Right, Alfa Romeo, Sauber, and good for them because they both scored points today. Giovinazzi, 10th. Kimi Raikkonen, 9th. Giovinazzi pitted early from the soft tyre onto the medium tyre on uh, 
lap uh, 12, so really early, to cover Roman Grosjean. But Kimi Raikkonen ran super long, 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 onto the medium tyre. Uh, he was running in P up to P4 at, uh, uh, at one point, pitted on lap 50, and then the safety car came out on lap 51 or 52. So he could have finished higher than uh, ninth had he got the rub of the green on the safety car, Kimi, but he seemed fairly philosophical uh, about it otherwise um, at the end. But still, that's two points for Alfa Romeo Sauber, and that doesn't happen every race, does it? So uh, really good, and uh, good to uh, for the team now that Alfa Romeo have said that they're staying as sponsor, and that they've confirmed Kimi and Giovinazzi for next year as well. So uh, Kimi Raikkonen was saying uh, that he's not getting too old for this luck and uh, his back is actually better than it was when he was in his mid thirties because he struggled with a back in long-term back injury that has now uh, healed itself. So um, actually he's in fine form. Doesn't look 41, does he? But uh, he is, he'll be 42 when he uh, gets to the end of next year's contract, of course. Right, Haas, let's talk about the fighting Viking and his massive headache. Well, it was a strange thing. So it's an electronic thing and it means that they go very sort of very aggressive upshifts and I mean it was pushing his head Kevin Magnuson's head and his crash helmet forward and then whacking it back on the headrest it was giving him a headache it wasn't too serious he said look it is my job I will fight through it but having that terrible first lap when he spun around as Gene has it meant that he was he was last anyway and uh, the spin on lap one was particularly annoying that was uh, that was it for K-Mag's race anyway but he is okay um, I could ask Gene if we're gonna have a driver announcement soon might we have a driver announcement soon Gene maybe Possibly. Another two, oh, you see, I can't get close to him because he's not in my bubble. What did he say, Pete? Another two weeks? What? Two races? Another two races? Or did he just get the fingers wrong and was saying something else to me? <laughs> Impossible to know. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, that'll teach me, I'm trying to throw a question to old Gene House. Uh, but Roman Grosjean, 14th, Kevin Magnussen, uh, DNF. Will we get a driver announcement soon? Mick Schumacher and uh, Nikita Mazepin. The hot favourites for that, we will see. Right, George Russell, DNF, and absolutely gutted. There he is, uh, or is that Nikki Latifi? Sorry, that's Nikki Latifi. Um, and uh, Lati uh, gutted, uh, Russell pitted on lap 12 onto the hard tyre, ran ahead of Giovinazzi, moved up to P11 with all the chaos, up to P10 when Max went out, would have scored his first points, not only of this season, but of last season as well, and his first points in Formula One. But he made a mistake. He lit up his rear tyres, he went off, just like those videos of idiots in supercars you see trying to boot it out of a slow corner and just spinning into the nearest bit of uh, guardrail. And that's what happened, sadly, with George Russell. He's gutted about it, we can all understand. It's, uh, it's character building and, and you can make no doubt about it, he will never do that again. Latifi did an opposite strategy to George Russell. He went long to lap 36 and uh, pitted and rejoined 15th, didn't pit under the safety car and uh, finished 11th for another 11th for him. So that's really good. 0.7 of a second, seven tenths of a second for uh, Nicholas Latifi. Is this the Latifi family? I think it is. Um, behind uh, behind uh, a point. But that is it for us. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we've got some good programs coming out, so do not turn off because we've got uh, Mike Wedderburn talking to Lewis Hamilton. My life, my race coming up right now. And then after Mike and Lewis's chat, we have got Willie T. Ribs, an hour long documentary about the legend Willie T that I did from my shed. And then in a couple of weeks time, we've got uh, the Turkish Grand Prix. We're back in Istanbul. So join us then. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye bye from Imola. Cheers. Sky Sports, feel it all.